charity for the pleasure of a love, the pleasure of a love. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Ramadan Mubarak, <laughs> welcome back to Ramadan Reminders. I'm Yusuf Estes. And we've been talking about something yesterday's program, and I want to continue that, talking about showing off, talking about arrogance, talking about Ria, talking about Kibber. Oh, how great I am. We discovered in yesterday's program that this is very dangerous and a person can go to hell forever because of arrogance. I want to continue what I was telling you about the devil. The devil himself got in trouble over this. You know, when he used to worship Allah before the creation of Adam, and Allah elevated him up so high, he was actually praying alongside of the angels. But he did so by choice, whereas the angels do so by command. They have no choice. So here is the jinn. That's devil. He's from the jinn. And he has this great position all of a sudden with angels. But then, but then Allah created Adam and he said, that's my best creation and I order all you guys to bow down. And all of them bowed down except for Iblis. Why? Because he said, I am better than this guy. You, you're nothing. You're made out of dirt. You're made out of mud. Me, I'm made from a smokeless fire. Therefore, I'm better than you. And because I'm better than you, I refuse to bow down. And that is how he got into trouble. That's what threw him out of his great state that he was in. And it's the same thing when we listen to the devil and he gets us to do these bad deeds. Now, alhamdulillah, in the month of Ramadan, as we mentioned in other programs, shaitan is tied up, but it doesn't mean he's dead. <laughs> it means that he's restricted. He's still there. He's still trying to do his job. But at least you have a big advantage over him this month. You need to be fasting. You need to be patient. We talked about in some of our programs being patient, persevering, hanging in there, and keeping a sense of tranquility about you so that when things arise, you don't get angry. We talked about that too. But now I'm trying to put this together. I'm trying to understand, okay, exactly what's the problem here with this devil, that this arrogance? And how serious is that? Well, we said that it amounts to shirk because shirk is to make partners with Allah. And you say, well, wait a minute. All he did was just disobey. But why he disobeyed, okay? Now, let me give you an example about something. Did you know you could actually disobey a commandment of Allah and not be in trouble? Huh? Yeah. It could be that you could get rewarded by disobeying a commandment from Allah. How? By the way, I hope you're paying close attention to what I'm saying and don't just take parts of the words here. <laughs> be careful what I'm telling you. Listen carefully. Did you know in Islam, in the Quran, it's ordered that you must not eat lahan khanzir. You must not eat the meat from the pig. Yeah? Okay. But if you're starving and there's no other food to eat and your family's hungry and you're going to die and all there is to eat is a pig, then you can eat the meat from the pig and you can continue to eat it until other uh, food is made available to you. You can eat it and just don't pig out. Mm -hmm. Never mind the joke. Anyway, what I'm trying to get across to you is here, you broke a commandment, but actually you're not in trouble with the law because Allah put you in the condition. It's a test now to see if you'll do what? Obey Allah by keeping yourself alive, keep your family alive, so you have actually stayed within the teachings of Islam. And this is what we know in Islam. The only thing that there's no exception to the rule is la ilaha illallah. Never is there any excuse to worship other than Allah. But coming back now to our topic of arrogance and showing off. Did you know that the prophet Moses, peace be upon him, he used to talk directly to Allah. And one time he asked Allah a question. He said, could the devil repent? Would you forgive him? Is that a possibility? Look what Allah said. Allah says, well, yes, I could forgive him, but he'd have to go to the grave of Adam and make the prostration that he refused to do in the first place. Now the devil says, if I wouldn't do it while Adam was alive, I'm sure not going to do it now that he's dead. 
So you see, he still refused. The prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, also asked a similar question. Could you forgive the devil? In other words, could he repent? And if he repented, would you forgive him? And Allah said, yes. Allah said, yes, he could. He could repent. It's possible. He said, but I already know he won't. So let us not be like the devil. We need to repent. There are many things that we've done, made mistakes, bad habits, things that we've hurt other people. But here's a good chance in this holy month of Ramadan to put a stop to that. Let's cease and desist from that bad thing that we've been doing. Let us now join together and this good spirit of the fasting and get away from all of these evil things that have been around us for the rest of the year. This is a good chance for us to kind of, you know what, take it easy. And if somebody comes to me with something, I don't know, I'll try to get me excited. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take a deep breath and let it out real slow and relax. And if somebody tried to get me angry, I'm going to remember the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, La Tug Dug, don't get angry. But he also taught us what to do. You start feeling hot and getting boiling inside. That's the shaitan. That's the devil running through you, coursing through your body like the blood in your veins. And this was mentioned, by the way, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said it like that. Like shaitan is inside of you, like your own blood. And what must I do? Ah, he told us, go to the, you know, the water and make wudu. What is wudu? That is, uh, you know, you wash your hands, your mouth, your face, and, and everything like we prepare for the salah. And when you put that water on, you know what? Even if the even if you're in the desert and the water is hot, and that's happened to me before, and you say, I'm making wudu with hot water. But guess what? As soon as you put the water on you, it starts to evaporate off, and you feel the coolness. And by the way, while you've already made wudu now anyway, why not pray? Why not go ahead and do salah? You say, well, it's not time. Oh, it's always time for salah, except during the forbidden times. And so go ahead and pray to Raqqah. Oh, and you know what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said about this? He said, the salah is the coolness of my eyes. And you know what? It is something really cool about the salah. And something cool about making the wudu. And something very, very nice inside of you when you realize that you're in control of your life and you can make the right choices. The right choice, the most important right choice for us is to worship Allah alone without any partners. And after that, to follow his prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And after that, to, to read and study and, you know what, put to use these good teachings that we have in the Quran. And then after that is our relationship with those who are around us. Being the person that is really like like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you really love him and follow him, then you do his way, his beautiful way, the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. You know, I wish we could continue and continue with this, but you're fasting, I'm fasting. So let's, let's wrap it up here with the Ramadan Reminders and come back tomorrow with more. RamadanReminders.com Don't forget that, RamadanReminders.com and we'll see you tomorrow right here on Ramadan Reminders. Oh, you who believe, give Thanks, charity for the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan.